All right, great. We got over, uh, looks like 140, 150 attendees right now. Thank you guys so much for uh, carving out some time out of your day to join us. Really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, hello and welcome to our webinar, it's Google's Best Practices for Marketing Your Shop Online. We know that your time is valuable, so we really appreciate you joining us today. So as always, anytime during the uh, presentation, send us your questions and comments through the chat box on your screen and stick around for the answers during our Q&A session at the end. I'm Casey Alfer, our All Data's marketing team. It's my pleasure to introduce Matt Kristofik. Matt is a Google product specialist who is focused on helping shops with their online and offline footprint. Today, he's going to show you how to make your advertising more accountable, actionable, and impactful using a myriad of tools. Matt has consulted with Fortune 100 companies where he's helped balance their media mix of Google products and ad solutions. So let's jump right into it. Take it away, Matt. Awesome. Thank you so much for that introduction, Casey. Today we're going to be exploring some of the best ways that you can connect with your prospective customers as they're searching for your shop or services online. There will be a lot of great information packed into this short session, but we'll be sure to leave you with the right resources where you can dig into some more information at Google, Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. At Google, we prioritize connecting users to information they care about. For your shop, that might mean showing up when they're looking for a shop near them or engaging with them when they're researching a product or service that your shop might offer. There are many ways to connect with your customers online, but we're going to highlight a focused list of areas that you can tackle successfully to meet the expectations of today's digital first consumers. There is no doubt that consumer behavior has changed with the introduction of technology in the past few decades. Even more recently, mobile phones have accelerated this change and changed our lives and expectations forever. For many industries, including auto parts, shops, and services, mobile has become the digital storefront for customers. With these supercomputers in our pockets, we can decide on a moment's notice on which shop to use that best fits our needs for many number of shops potentially located near my location. Customers have more access to information and can research topics deeply on a moment's notice. There are more choices than ever before. As technology gets better, customers' expectations also increase for how they wish to connect with what your shop has to offer them. Customers value experiences where there is little friction and they can easily access the information they are looking for at the moment they want it. In today's busy world, if you don't commit to speed, you are losing customers. Customers have more choices than ever before, thanks in large part to internet access. There are three areas that I wanna highlight as areas of importance to think about for your customers. The first, time. Customers have limited time and patience when it comes to engaging with your shop online. The second, transparency. There is an expectation of transparency that allows you to quickly build trust and offer up the right information at the right time. People don't wanna to have to navigate through multiple pages to get what they want when they're looking for things on your website. And then finally, technology. You need to be aware of the various avenues your customers are engaging with your company. It is not only about the device the customers are using, but also the method that they use and choose to contact you, whether that be a phone call, text, chat, driving navigations, potential apps you might offer, or e-commerce purchases. It's no longer as important for a shopper to be present in a store as it is for a store to be present for a shopper whenever, wherever, and however they choose to shop. Consider this, in 2017, 80% of the $49 billion auto parts category is projected to be digitally influenced. That's up versus 78% last year. Seeing stats like this, you need to consider what are you doing today to future-proof your business. There has never been a more important time to ensure that you have a great digital storefront. In the past five years, we've seen foot traffic in U.S. retail shops decline by 57%, but in that same time, the value of every visit has nearly tripled. Consumers are doing their homework online before they come to you, and when they do finally arrive, they usually have a strong intent to buy. Google My Business gives you the tools to take charge of what people see when they do a local search for your shop. It allows you to update your digital listing and engage with your customers from your phone, tablet, or computer. And perhaps just as important, it's free to use. People looking for local shops have become more informed 
as customers have higher intent to purchase and research products online before even stepping foot in your store. Need to adjust your holiday hours or add a new phone number? Make these changes in a few easy steps with Google My Business and your updated listing will be updated in real time. Draw on new customers with photos of your products and services. Pictures show what's unique and inviting about your shop and you can add as many as you'd like. Reviews are now a two-way conversation between you and your customers. Be the first to know when you get a new review so you can respond right away. 70% of people trust online reviews posted by other consumers. If you have happy customers, ask them to post a review of your shop on your Google My Business listing. Your listing appears right when people are searching for your shop or shops like yours and makes it easy to create and update your listing so you can stand out and bring customers in. Another added benefit is that your Google My Business listing appears seamlessly across Google Search, Google Maps, and now today, as well as across the Google Assistant to give your shop as much reach as possible for when people are looking for you. Google My Business also offers an insights dashboard to learn how customers are interacting with your shop listing. How did people find you? Where are they coming from? With the insights dashboard, the answers are right there for you. Discover where people are coming from to better target your customers and bring in new ones. You can also find out which of your shop photos, for example, are getting the most attention and how you're doing compared to similar shops. Check out customer views and actions and how to set yourself apart by reviewing your clicks, calls, listing, views, and etc. You also have the ability to reach just beyond your followers. Give someone searching for your shop near them a reason to come in by posting updates and offers directly to your Google local listing. Give customers more reason to come back by posting weekly deals or seasonal updates. Mobile phones have changed the world. Today, everyone has smartphones with them, constantly communicating and looking for information. I know personally, and I'm not too proud to admit it, my phone is the last thing I look at before I go to bed and it's the first thing I reach for when I get up in the morning. The majority of customers coming to your shop today are likely using a mobile device to get them there in some way, one way or another. If you're struggling to find the resources to manage a website or put forth the expense, with Google My Business, you can create a simple website that looks great in under 10 minutes. And again, it's completely free, easy to create, and edit from your computer or phone. You can set up your site in three simple steps. Create, your website automatically is generated from your Google My Business lifting, taking all the heavy lifting off your hands. You're able to edit and customize the text, photos, and add different design themes. Then you can publish and choose a domain and set your site live, and it looks great across multiple devices and multiple screens. Your free website is super simple to set up, and it includes powerful features designed to help more customers come into your shop. Two ready-made features for your shop are the ability to promote potential customers to call your store with a clear call to action. And this is a great way to get the phones ringing right away as well as the option for people to submit their information for you to contact them at your convenience. Features like booking appointments are not currently available, but are coming soon, so keep an eye out for it. If you already have a mobile website, you need to ask yourself, does it load quickly? Did you know that 53% of people will leave a mobile site if it takes more than three seconds to load? For your own site, I'd recommend a great free tool from Google testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. It allows you to see how your mobile site stacks up against the competition. After simply entering your website, Google runs a free analysis that provides rich insights. Some of these insights include learning how fast your page loads on a person's device, the estimated visitors you're losing who don't want to wait for your page to load, and a competitive analysis that will actually show how your website stacks up to other competitors in the industry where we know customers have choices today. As a shop owner, you understand your customers' needs well. Google offers an additional free tool that helps you better understand what might be on their minds. We like to think of Google as a database for intent. People come to Google when they are researching for information, answers to their questions, researching products to buy, and even looking to buy products directly online. Google Trends is another great free tool and a great way to tap into the mind of the consumer and explore consumer trends. With Google Trends, you can explore themes by keyword or category, by location, or even over time. For instance, 
If you wanted to know what people were searching for as it relates to your area and shop, just pop that into Google Trends and you might be surprised what you find. In the past three years, near me searches have steadily increased, largely in part due to improving technology. With increased usage of mobile phones that have GPS signals and connecting to Google My Business listings, it's now possible for a customer to easily search their options and have choices populate with Google Maps navigation right on their phone. Google Trends allows you to see where customer behavior shifts are taking place and more importantly, how you can meet your customer's needs and wants. Now that you have a strong digital storefront with your Google My Business listing and your website experiences are great on both mobile and desktop devices and you have a strong pulse on your customer's behaviors, let's talk about how to recognize the signals for reaching your customers who are ready to purchase your products and services. Whether you're looking to attract new website visitors, get the phones ringing, or get cars in the bay, Google AdWords can help. Your shop gets found by the right people on Google precisely when they're searching for things that your shop offers, all with a cost-effective pricing model. You only pay when a person actually clicks on your ad, is going to your website, or calling your local phone number. The Keyword Planner is another free tool in AdWords that lets you build a workshop for your search advertising campaigns and expand your new or expand your existing ones. You can search for keyword ideas, get historical statistics, see how a list of keywords might perform, and even create a new keyword list by multiplying several lists of keywords together. The Keyword Planner can also help you choose optimal bids and budgets for your advertising campaigns on Google. If you're already running AdWords campaigns and are looking to boost your performance, consider trying a number of the Google AdWords ad extension options. Extensions expand your ad with additional information, giving people more regions to choose your shop. They typically increase ads click-through rates by several percentage points. Two of my favorites are call extensions and location extensions, but others include links to different pages on your websites, as well as the ability to feature specific pricing deals for products and services that you offer. For those looking to get even more out of AdWords, consider using our free conversion tracking tool that allows you to see what happens after a customer clicks on your ads, whether they've purchased a product, signed up for a newsletter, or called your shop. If you designate the action that is most important for you to track, then there are many possibilities to garner insights. Google offers a plethora of great free resources that can make the digital ecosystem much less daunting. I wanted to highlight one here today, Google Digital Garage, as one of my favorites. It includes free tutorials from Google on everything from your website to online marketing and beyond. You can dig in at your own pace and self-select the content from as many topics that may interest you. Now, I know that was a lot, but if you only remember three things today, I'd like you to walk away with these. Register your shop's Google My Business listing. Utilize our free mobile website tools to help make sure you're not losing prospective customers before they come in the door. And lastly, start taking advantage of all the great free digital tools provided by Google to help your shop continue to grow. Thank you so much. Casey, I'll throw it over to you to the question portion. Thank you, Matt. Wow, that's a lot of great info. And we got a lot of questions from you guys, so it's going to be a really good Q&A session. I can already tell. Let's see, uh, Rebecca Endress actually asks, I have multiple locations. I'm interested in building business in a couple of locations. Any insight on how to accomplish this through Google? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. Uh, first thing I, I usually like to recommend and, and was the, the, the kind of headline here today is for those individual locations, make sure that you're uh, kind of taking ownership uh, and registering your Google My Business locations. That's going to give you control over all the super important information when people are searching for you online. Uh, so I definitely start there uh, before doing anything else. Also, some folks are asking about that test my site link again. Uh, We'll probably just enter it in the chat box um, before the, the end. Yeah, we can absolutely enter it in the, uh, in the chat box. Let me just pull it back up here. So the link is testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, no problem. Let's see. What else do we got here? Let's see. Jason uh, Kozak from uh, Mr. Muffler. Uh, seems like my AdWords dollars are not as effective as I'd like them to be. I have uh, 
Kukui managing my AdWords? Well, I guess that's sure. More yeah, no, I, I can jump in there. So, you know, uh, not, you know, not having an intimate knowledge of the business from an ad effectiveness perspective. Um, one of the things that I always like to recommend if you, uh, if you are running AdWords campaigns uh, and you haven't tried them out yet are call only ads. What call only ads are uh, running your normal PPC ads, which would go to a website. Um, one way to actually, you know, feel a very tangible result of your advertising dollars with Google is running call only ads. And it gives the ability of the person uh, when, when they're searching for things, you're only giving them the ability to call the store. So I think it's a really, very if you haven't tested it out yet, it might be a very tangible way to potentially feel some, feel, feel that uh, advertising dollars being spent uh, to good use. Cool. Uh, Ramiro Jara asks, how can I request an update to speak to you? Uh, images are of the old business are appearing at his address. Sure, that's, that's a great question and one we get uh, all the time. Uh, so if, if, if you're in Google Maps uh, and you have a specific image up, usually in the either uh, bottom right-hand corner or the bottom left-hand corner, there'll be a little button to submit feedback. So if, it is a, uh, if it's a wrong image, if it's an outdated image, go ahead and please uh, to make sure to click on that feedback button. Our teams do look at all that information. And so we, we, we take it very seriously. So if there's something that's wrong or outdated, please make sure to enter the feedback in there and then they'll be able to take a look at it. I kind of got a series of uh, related questions. Uh, Jim Cardona asks, uh, do you offer assistance building PPC campaigns? And then we'll go on to the next question after you answer that. So. Sure, yeah, well, we don't on the product side, um, but we do have a, a Google 1-800 number that our, our teams are kind of standing by to help out small and medium-sized businesses if they have any specific questions with their advertising campaigns, uh, and it's uh, 24 hours uh, of support there. So if you just go on Google uh, and Google AdWords support number, uh, you'll be able to dial in and, and someone will be able to help you. Cool, and then uh, Bobby Lickis is asking, is Google My Business a new initiative? Google My Business is, uh, is not a new initiative. It's one that has been around for uh, a while. Uh, I, I just think with the advent and the increasing usage of, of mobile, and if you remember one of the slides there that we showed the graph, uh, the number of people that are actually starting to increase their searches for near me, so shops near me, tow truck near me, auto repair near me. Uh, we've just seen the usage actually go up, so our, our product folks have, have spent some time uh, just making sure that it's, you know, we're keeping up with all the bells and whistles to keep the product running as smooth as possible because we're definitely seeing increased usage from it. All right. Uh, Gary Ward is asking, uh, is Google My Business Reviews different from Google Search Reviews? Really, really good question there. Yeah, so that, that is a good question. So uh, the reviews you see on, on Google Search and the, the reviews you will see on uh, Google My Business, if you uh, take ownership of your Google My Business account and it's linked to your Google information, they'll be one and the same. And that's one of the things that I always usually recommend to people. I, I know uh, kind of in the industry, word of mouth uh, is gold for a lot of shop owners. Uh, and, and so what we've actually seen and we recommend is for those shop owners, you know, if you have those kind of, uh, you know, super loyal uh, customers that keep coming back, Ask them to submit a review on, on Google uh, for you because um, we usually see that has a, a big impact for potential new customers if, if a shop has a bunch of reviews uh, and, and a high rating on Google My Business. Awesome. Uh, let's see. Rebecca Endress asked, uh, fresh website content allegedly boosts SEO on Google. What type of new content works best, like reviews, blog, et cetera? Yeah, I, I think re reviews, you hit it right there, reviews on the head, uh, hit it on the head is, is one that we see that really, really performs well. Uh, like I said, because those usually come from, you know, independent people. It's not someone uh, you know, from the Google side or someone from the actual advertiser side. Uh, and people really, really trust, you know, you see it not only across Google, Yelp and other things where user reviews are, are really currency, uh, high value currency, uh, you know, for, for new customers when they want to potentially try a new store, a new restaurant or something out. Rob Deming says, why does Google keep your account is suspended? Sure, I'm assuming he's maybe potentially talking about uh, an AdWords account. Uh, what I would recommend there is, is dialing into the 1-800 number. Uh, accounts can be suspended, suspended for uh, a number of reasons from a policy perspective. Don't want to comment just because I can't, uh, you know, obviously don't have insight into the specific account, but I would definitely recommend dialing into the AdWords support number so they can help you out with that. 
see, uh, and, uh, we got another question here from Alvin Melton. I think he says, not sure you got my question about dollars. Should we have to pay for Google Ads or just set up Google Plus? Sure, so that's a great question. Uh, in Google My Business and everything that we, outside of the last two slides uh, around potentially using ad extensions and AdWords, Google My Business is completely free. So everything on that listing, uh, as well as using uh, the, the, the free website is, is completely free. So when you're showing up, uh, when your Google My Business listing shows up on, on maps, you know, obviously no, no advertising dollars spent there. And so that's why I always highly encourage local shop owners to uh, take ownership and, and register those listings um, because it's like I said in terms of you know what we call uh, earned earned impressions and stuff like that it's it's a pretty prime real estate that you don't have to pay for so that's why I encourage people to uh, register it making sure they're, they're owning those listings well, let's see there's some questions coming in about basically standing out um, amongst the crowd in my big box stores so we have Wendy Smith asking what's the best way to come out on the map and we also have Leela White from now go automotive asking uh tapping into the local customer that hasn't been a mechanic shop before but does now and she doesn't know how she'll stand out against big box shops and uh basically take advantage of local opportunities so how how can yeah. how can people use these these tools from google to stand out against you know some of the big guys yeah, that's, that's a great question and one we get a lot. Uh, I think the first thing that you want to do is just because we've seen such a large increase in the number of people actually looking for hyper local things. So like I said, all those services near me is first and foremost to be able to register those listings because if you can register those Google My Business listings, you're basically on the level, a level playing field with all of the big box stores in terms of being able to show up in a specific geo area when someone is looking for a specific services that, you, that your shop might offer. So it helps level the playing field if you can be able to take ownership and, and kind of highlight some things that your shop might be able to do. And then the second thing is I would recommend taking a peek at some of those tools we had talked about, uh, Google Trends being one of them, uh, to potentially look for certain things that people in your area might be looking for to be able to see, are they searching for those big box stores? Are they actually searching for more local or potentially like mom and pop type stores? Uh, like I said, you'd probably be surprised on some of the things uh, and information that you'd be able to see in there. So I, I would definitely check out Google Trends because I think you'd be surprised people searching a little bit more local versus actually searching for the big box stuff and might be some insights there to take away to help you compete. Well, yeah, and as a consumer, too, I think uh, at the mom and pop shop level, there's probably more of a customer service relationship going on that would also work out to shop's benefits. Uh, let's see, uh, Frank Martinez says, uh, what do you think of Yelp? Yeah, Yelp is great. I use Yelp all the time. Uh, like I said, those those reviews are are are, are great currency, and, and and people really trust them. So that's why I always say try to you know ask your customers to give you a review on Yelp, give them a uh, you know review on on Google My Business or other platforms. So I, I definitely encourage it. All right, uh, let's go back to the old picture question from Philip White. He's asking, as the registered owner of my Google business page, I cannot remove old images, but simply need to enter feedback for those pics. And they moved in October of 2014, but still have photos of the old shop on the page. Yep, good question. Uh, and again, uh, submitting the feedback is, is the best route. Sometimes it takes a little while, as you can imagine, uh, or a couple of submissions to actually get the image updated. And that's just actually to kind of protect people more so than anything else. You know, you wouldn't want someone to potentially provide fraudulent feedback and change something that wasn't supposed to be. So like I said, if, if, if it doesn't work the first time, a few more times will definitely uh, do the trick. So I would just say the feedback button uh, is the best way to do it. Let's see, uh, a lot of people get word of mouth, so uh, doing well there, like Darren Higgs from Fontaine Auto Services. They've been doing word of mouth for 16 years, so it would be interesting to see uh, how they can tackle all of this with Google's tools. And let's see here, Ron Hefter is asking, we use a third-party company, um, Mechanicnet, uh, that will send out thank yous to our customers, and our customer replies back to Mechanicnet with reviews of our business, uh, where we have numerous great reviews, but that is as far as they go in terms of being viewed. Uh, can we link third party to Google reviews? 
So you can't link third party to your uh, Google My Business reviews. That might be one where potentially, you know, if you have a website, being able to provide a link there. So when people get to the website, that they might be able to uh, explore the, uh, the mechanics site with the views that way. Evelyn Ramirez from SOS Auto Repair had asked basically how to get customers to review their business and what would be the proper way to advertise that. Yeah, so that's a great question. And a lot of times, I, well, I just have talked to shop owners, even some local shops where, where I live. It's, you know, when you go in there and, and uh, the consumer's paying, sometimes they'll offer a promotion, you know, a few dollars off if you go to my Google My Business or even, you know, my Facebook listing or my Yelp listing and, and, and write a review. So sometimes offering a promotion helps. Other times just asking them to do it. And it's very simple. You know, you just go to either Google.com or you go to Google Maps and they search for your shop and then you'll be able to see it right there. It'll pull up the information information and they can select, you know, the one through five stars and leave comments that way. Well, that's lots of great questions, guys. Keep them coming. Gary Wards are nicely done, guys. Good info here. Thank you. Well, thank you for attending, Gary. Uh, let's see, and then we got a question from Daniel Kreider. How often does Google update aerial satellite images? That is a great question, and I will be perfectly honest. I do not know. <laughs> well, maybe yearly. I don't know. Let's see. Aaron Nance is asking, in a service downswing in percentage of repair orders written, how can repair shops best utilize Google to spread word or improve reviews in a downturn? Yeah, that's a great question. We offer the ability to actually reply to your reviews. I think you can even see a question for uh, uh, from Jim here in the, in the chat box. So, um, you know, you know, hopefully everyone's giving you great reviews. Uh, if you if you see an unfavorable review, you know that happens. Customers aren't always happy 100% of the time. If you feel that it, you know, something is is absolutely false or kind of not uh, legitimate, we offer the ability to actually reply to those reviews uh, on on your on the listing there, um, which is a way to kind of make sure uh, you, that you can have a conversation with that person online, uh, you know, to actually flesh that out to see if it was false or not. Um, but it also, like I said, we talked about transparency, actually shows consumers that you're willing to, you know, so does not bury your head in the sand, so to speak, and it actually kind of have a conversation in terms of, you know, maybe it was a poor cons customer experience for whatever reason and you want to talk to them about it online, or they'd be able to kind of combat uh, what may appear as, a, as not a legitimate review as well. So would the replies to the conversation be public so other consumers can see this exchange? Exactly. All right. Let's see, uh, Darren Bart is asking, I'm trying to verify my business on Google My Business, but when I click verify now, it takes me in a loop. It goes to a map page where I click on my address, then it says someone else has already verified this thing. And the email address that I use is mine. Then it says account recovery, and I enter my info, and it says success, but then it still won't let me verify. Got it. And so, and you know, not to take up too much time tactically here, uh, if you are seeing something like that, I'd recommend, like you said, searching for the Google support number. So again, just going on Google uh, and searching for Google My Business Support, and you'll be able to get a 1-800 number uh, and actually talk to someone to kind of walk you through that steps if it's uh, if you are if it's a little bumpy. Okay, uh, let's see here, Daniel Crater again. Uh, can a review be deleted? Reviews cannot be deleted. Um, if you are suggesting uh, that you know maybe something is on there fraudulently or erroneously, you have the ability to uh, f submit feedback. You know, if someone is using expletives or you know racial slurs or something that, from a policy perspective, um, wouldn't be allowed on Google, please go ahead and fit, submit the feedback button there. Um, but that's usually the only time that a review would be deleted. Frank Martinez asked. Also, what do you think? of opening up a YouTube channel for my shop. I think that's a great idea. You'd actually be surprised on the uh, amount of content from a how-to perspective that people actually look online. So how to do this, how to do that. Uh, from, a, from a car perspective, what, what do I need to do here? Um, so there's usually a lot of great and uh, engaging content. So I would say uh, it's a good idea if you have the content to put on there. You know, uh, it's nothing that actually takes a ton of time from a management perspective. Um, but if you have the actual content to put helpful videos up there, uh, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, well, even if it's just like a tour of uh, the waiting room or something.
something. It's just more content that can be pushed out that will help get them uh, the uptick on searches too. Absolutely. Let's see, uh, Jennifer uh, Rockna asks, in making my website mobile, will it knock me off the first page of Google? No, it, it, it sure won't. Um, and I would say mobile websites uh, usually get a little bit more favorability uh, on, on Google. Uh, if you're searching on your phone, if you don't have a, a website that is mobile enabled and you only have a desktop enabled website, I would say the majority of people don't really have that problem uh, any, anymore these days. Um, but if you don't have a mobile version of your desktop, uh, that could potentially hurt your Google search results uh, from a mobile perspective. Everybody has a phone and is going to use that to search everything. Uh, thank you guys for putting in all these questions and again for your time too. I know that uh, we're going into a really extensive Q&A, but this is really good information and content. So uh, let's keep it going. Uh, from Randy, uh, Chevier, sorry, Chevier, <laughs> we should be able to have illegitimate reviews removed. Two of ten of my reviews are bogus. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, like I said, it's obviously uh, a little bit hard to to prove that out from from a Google perspective. Um, you know, definitely hear where you're coming from. If you definitely think that there's something on there that's uh, that, that's that's fraudulent uh, or, or definitely not right in any way whatsoever, like I said I would I would recommend hitting the feedback button that way uh, and, and suggesting uh, why it should be removed. Yeah, good deal. There was a question. I forget whose name it was, but they had asked. They had two Google sites, and they asked if they could be merged. Uh, two Google My Business listings. Uh, she just said Google sites, but I would assume yes, two business listings. So uh, one account can own uh, multiple Google My Business listings. Uh, we won't merge two Google My Business listings just because on Google Maps they show up as two different uh, physical locations. All right. Let's see, let's let's look around. Let me get one more question out of here, uh, and then we can start wrapping things up. Uh, can you expand? This is from Jennifer Fox. Can you expand on the difference between Google Business listings and Google Plus listings? Yeah, so that's a great question. So Google My Business and, and Google Plus are, are are very integrated, and, and so uh, the, the same login uh, will be used for for all of it. So if you have Google Plus, you can log in through your Google Plus and claim your Google My Business that way. If not, uh, you can just start by uh, claiming your Google My Business listing outside of Google Plus. Awesome. So uh, we're gonna start wrapping things up here. Thank you, Matt. And we'll be emailing the recording, like I said, about the next week or so. So be sure to check out alldata.com for more info. And be on the lookout for our next webinar uh, with the humble mechanic, uh, Charles Sandville, as he gives us tips on working with Volkswagen. And so actually, if you'd like to register for that webinar that's coming up in September, you can just put your name in the chat box, and we'll get you signed up. And you don't have to do anything. You'll get a confirmation email. So. Be sure to do that if you're interested, and if you got anything else to say, Matt, um, I think this just about does it. So, yeah, thanks, thanks, Casey. I appreciate it. And like I said, I'll just I'll just leave with maybe one helpful hint. This is feedback that we've gotten from other shop owners uh, that have had success from uh, from a Google My Business perspective. One of the things that's kind of been a trend that I've seen that has been a huge time saver is uh, well, once a shop owner actually goes in uh, and, and claims the Google My Business account, one thing that they've mentioned that's been a big time saver for for them is being able to edit their store hours during the holiday season. Um, a lot of people would potentially call to say, hey, are you open, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. If you can actually uh, update your Google My Business listing uh, with, with holiday hours that are potentially different from the norm, the feedback we've gotten is that that's been a big time saver uh, for people before they actually would call into the shop. They get the information right there, see, oh, the, you know, maybe a Labor Day or Memorial Day weekend that the hours are a little different, just a little bit of a time saver on the shop side. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, again, we still have the chat box open, folks. So, if you have any questions, throw them in there. And I'd just like to reiterate our next webinar with Charles Sandville, the humble mechanic. If you don't know who he is, check him out, humble mechanic. He's actually got a pretty good Google footprint. So, um, check out his videos and be on the lookout for the next webinar. And if 
Thank you, everyone, for taking the time to join us for this webinar. Thank you, especially Matt, for all this valuable, valuable content and uh, just good stuff. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone.